Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We certainly would love to hear from you, so please send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Well, today our guest is Father Joseph Marquis. He is the pastor of Sacred Heart Byzantine Catholic Church in Livonia, Michigan. And he is also the founder of All the Saints Shrines at his parish. So he's the founder of All Saints Shrines at his parish. And we're going to talk about that. And we had a very busy family weekend. We did indeed. We, we had a special event with Nathan, mm -hmm. our oldest male grandson. And it was parents' night mm -hmm. at, uh, at his high school. And so all the parents got to go out onto the field. And we were just so proud with Rebecca and Nathan, his parents, 10 family members out there on the field giving thanks for Nathan for his time there in high school, outstanding football player. And beyond our family, I wanted to mention one guy in particular. We were in the stands. Yes watching, proud as we can be, of Nathan and of, of the family. And uh, there, was a, there was a grandfather, I knew he was a grandfather, that was there up in the stands. You know, when the, when the families come out, you know, people applaud, and some people have people there, some don't. So there wasn't many applause, but this grandfather had an image, a picture on a stick of his granddaughter, who was mm -hmm. being honored as a band member, cheerleader, something. And, uh, you know, when it came time and they announced her name, he just stuck up the picture of his granddaughter like this, and he just kind of looked around and did like this. It so sweet. It was so great, the love of a grandfather. And then when he put it down, he watched the image go down. Uh -huh. uh, and he just kind of looked at her like that. I was so blessed, not only for our family, Nathan and their family, but for, for this guy and for that, that uh, granddaughter of his. Well, it was a beautiful family weekend, lots of football. Then we also had our banquet this week. Yeah. So it was kind of like way full. Yeah. And we had a Patricia Sandoval, who was our beautiful banquet speaker, and we've had her on our, our show. And um, we also had over 415 people that showed up. This We didn't have the banquet last year because of COVID. Yeah. And so uh, Patricia Sandoval was there. Dr. Del Hahn, who is the founder of Her Choice Birmingham Women's Center. And it was like a beautiful celebration. It was like a pro-life party. People in the Birmingham area, and we had people that came from out of town, believe it or not, yeah. um, just wanted to show up and celebrate life and get back out. Yeah. And um, it was a beautiful evening. A lot of hard work. A lot of young people. And okay? a lot of yeah. young people. We had a, a, a table full, eight to ten, of high school students. Then we had college students. Then we had young professionals. And I mean, they were so impacted right. uh, by the testimony through Patricia Sandoval and the gospel of life. And so it's encouraging to know that there are generations that are being raised mm -hmm. up that yes. are so gripped by the sacredness and dignity of every human being from the moment of conception through natural death. So that as we enter into our reward at some point, we hope and pray um, that there's a whole generation coming up that is standing for life. Right, and as a people of life, we need to be full of hope Amen. that especially come December 1st, today's, you know, we're in the month of November, December 1st, our Supreme Court is going to hear a very important case. And so we, as a people of God, need to be full of hope. We need to be prayerful and we need to be fasting that God would turn back the scourge upon all Father land of Joseph abortion. Father Joseph McKee is here with us. Marquis, and he's going to be sharing some of his relics. He has over 200 relics. We're going to see uh, St. Joseph of Nazareth, a robe fragment, St. Paul, and a piece of the thread from the Holy Shroud. So mm. it's a wonderful, wonderful show. When the saints show up, something great's about to happen. We'll be right back. Don't go away. back while you are at home with Jim and Joy. And today our guest is Father Joseph Marquis. He is pastor of Sacred Heart Byzantine Catholic Church in Livonia, Michigan. He is also the founder of the All Saint Shrine 
at his parish. And you can go to the website, allsaintshrine.org, and you'll learn so much about relics there. Well, Father, we are delighted to have you here with us. You are a familiar face to our EWTN family as you appear on the uh, EWTN with the Donut Man. Masterpiece. Masterpiece Donut, donut Shop. Donut shop. And you, Bob Evans, the Donut Man. Beautiful work you do there. Yeah, work of discipleship with those yes. young people, no doubt mm -hmm. about it. Just want to mention, if you go to allsaintshrine.com or org, you'll still get us. Okay. Okay. Some perfect, people good. put in comments. It's fine. Okay. Just perfect. to let you know. Okay. Well, tell our family a little bit about your journey of faith, because I'm sure they've seen you and they like. How did it get to be him? Oh, that's a good question. I guess uh, basically it's my uh, love for the saints. Primarily in the beginning was Saint Nicholas, Saint Joseph, of course, and the Holy Mother of God. But St. Uh, Nicholas is a very important figure in the Eastern tradition of the Catholic Church, the Byzantine Rite. Uh, he is the protector of our tradition the way St. Joseph is for the Universal Church uh, for the Western Rite. So um, and I came from a very good uh, family. They loved the Lord. They were setting a good example. My mother and father were very committed. Uh, they, I saw them praying all the time together. We prayed together. We, I was originally in the, in the Roman Rite of the Catholic Church. We prayed the Rosary all the time. So we had a good foundation. We had a number of difficulties early on. My father came, approached near death. Let me keep this short, but uh, he had tuberculosis and my mother had a problem in pregnancy. And through the intercession of St. Nicholas, they survived. Mm -hmm. And uh, on top of that, on Christmas uh, day, when my mother had the problem in pregnancy and she almost bled out, mm -hmm. um, she gave birth to a a baby brother mm, for us. What a gift. So it's always a part of what motivates me and I'm always seeking St. Nicholas's help in basic daily life. I, I always, I'm always connected with St. Nicholas. He's yes. just a dear friend. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Father, Beautiful. share with us a little bit about relics in and of themselves. And from what I observe and hear from people, mm -hmm. those of us who understand relics to some degree mm -hmm. and the veneration of them and, sure. and what, the power that's with them, you know, maybe we knew it from early on or we learned it, but for some other people, it's really weird, it's really strange, especially for our, yeah. a lot of Catholics, Protestant, Protestants, it's like, what, what, why do you have remains or mm -hmm. something that's touched the saint? You know, what is it all about? They're dead. Share with us about relics. There's something in the human uh, psyche that relates with relics. For example, I went to uh, Louisville, Kentucky. I don't know if you ever read into the Louisville mm -hmm. Slugger. Mm -hmm. place. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was exciting. But if you went to the museum, what's the first thing they had in the case? A broken bat. Mm -hmm. My mother would have thrown it out. I bet other mothers mm -hmm. <laughs> with their teenage kids playing baseball would have thrown it out too. But it was in a glass. It was beautifully, it had lighting on it, beautifully displayed. And I looked, and it belonged to Babe Ruth. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. And it turned out he uh, hit a broken bat hit. And so the bad boy kept it, and he donated it to the museum. And it had notches in it. He had notches like, you know, the gunslinger in the Old West mm -hmm. on, the, on the handgun. Mm -hmm. So he put notches every time he had a home run. And you're looking at this thing, inherently there's no value to it at all. What is it? It's a contact with greatness. Mm -hmm. Secular on, on a human level, yes, but greatness. Uh, if you don't believe in shrines of sports, go to... Cooperstown, right? go to the uh, Hockey Hall of Fame in Montreal, Canada, uh, go to the Football Hall of Fame, and people have no trouble. They're, they're, here's uh, Johnny Unitas' uh, <coughs> uniform or whatever, mm -hmm. or Gordie Howe's uniform or Ted Lindsay with the Detroit Red Wings, and I'm a big Red Wing fan. Uh, but there's something in the human cycle that's contact with something that evokes mm. uh, us to become more than what we are. Mm. Yeah. Now, Polycarp, who was ordained, by the way, by John the Apostle. He was uh, murdered in 155 A.D. And, uh, you know, he offered himself up uh, to the Lord. And his gratitude was uh, such, and his example was such, uh, that it inspired people to go to his grave. And we know that no one's really dead. We know we go into eternal life. And, you know, I could ask, you, Joy and Jim, could you please pray for me for this specific mm -hmm. intention? Mm -hmm. I would assume you'd say yes. Mm -hmm. Why do the bonds of love end with death? Mm -hmm. So when we say to the saints, all we're saying to them, would you pray, pray with me to the Lord? Yes. You know, intercessory prayer. Yeah. You see this in the book of Revelations, the, the martyrs, mm -hmm. they're imploring. So the saints actually, the idea of venerating relics goes back really even in the Old Testament. Remember Joseph, they took his body out of Egypt. Why would they, what is this? 
just mm -hmm. a body because uh, this body inhabited someone of greatness mm -hmm. and and it called out this idea of the covenant with the Lord and putting our trust in the Lord even when we're faced with death. Mm -hmm. So, and even in uh, Jerusalem, we know, you see this in Scripture, we know where David's tomb is. I went down to where ta David's tomb was when I was in the Holy Land. So this is something that's not new. Mm -hmm. Trouble is people impose on them, on these uh, relics, preconceived ideas. For example, horror movies, you know, with Bela Lugosi and dead <laughs> bodies and all this mm -hmm. kind of crazy stuff. But they don't think, uh, think of it when they go to the grave of a loved one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Polycarp, they said early on, they treasured the grave of Polycarp because his bones were more precious than jewels or mm -hmm. the finest pearls. I'm mm -hmm. paraphrasing, but that's the sense of it. So the uh, idea of, of relics is an immediacy yeah. that we have this physical contact with part of the structure, just the way we see Babe Ruth's bat at mm -hmm. the Hall of Fame, even though it's beyond use anymore. The body seems to be out, beyond use. but. The person, there's a contact with that person in a special way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with the saints, the same same thing. Yeah. Uh, we have a sense that, wait a minute, you know, I've got bone and sinew. He was animated by the Holy Spirit. What's lacking for me? In other words, mm -hmm. I'm not as open as these individuals were. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a way of uh, inspiring us to follow Christ the way the martyrs would inspire those of who followed them. Uh, to offer the blood for Christ. All the tw uh, 12 apostles, except for the beloved disciple John, as we know, were murdered. The endure what mo the mother of God endured was, I think, far worse than even a physical martyr to watch mm -hmm. her son yes. suffer the way she did. So the saints inspire us to be what God created us to be. It was mm -hmm. seen John Paul, uh, who said, uh, we are not the sum of our mistakes and our shortcomings, you and I are the sum of our Heavenly Father's love for us. And the saints knew it. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. They knew it. Yeah. There's just something very, very special as I've gone through the years of praying to the saints, but praying with the saints or to the saints when their relic is present. Mm -hmm. I mean, I sense so much power when the relic is there. Something's touching down, the, the glory of the Lord is made manifest in such great power. I've seen in, in museums, for example, in the secular context, uh, Abraham Lincoln, I understand there's a museum, they actually have the actual lead bullet that killed him. Mm -hmm. Now, most people say, get rid of that thing, it's ghoulish. Mm -hmm. But what does that do for the person that looks upon it? Mm -hmm. The sacrifice, the shedding even of the blood of the President of the United States mm -hmm. to dispel f forever we're the first country in world history that dispelled slavery forever. That's amazing. But this man was a bloody sacrifice of mm -hmm. sorts. Right. And they thought it was going to be another uprising, and people are saying, this is really ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So there's something. We're, our Lord, when he took on a human nature, he sanctified the material world. Even when he entered into the waters of baptism in the Eastern theology, we talk about him sanctifying all the waters yeah. of the world. Mm -hmm. Well, Father, your All Saints Shrine has approximately 200 relics, I think. 240 and, and 240? counting. 240? Mm -hmm. And counting, okay. yeah. And they're large, fairly large. Yes. To be well, honest you with brought you. some relics with you. Mm -hmm. So whom have you brought with you, or what have you brought with you today? <laughs> Let's begin. Well, we know this is the year of St. Joseph in the church, and the East and the Western church is uh, having a special focus on his uh, personal attributes and obedience to God, without even raising a question, not one word mentioned that uh, Joseph ever spoke in the scriptures. The only one we know he did say was the holy name of Jesus because mm -hmm. he spoke as father and he was the father. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, his wife, Mary, was a true spouse, but they, they forewent the um, rites of the marriage bed because it was a unique person in all of human history that he was comforting and protecting the yes. holy family. And it's interesting because he's comforted uh, in a dream mm -hmm. when the angel appeared to him and said, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. She has become a child because of the overshadowing the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And there's all I conjecture, how did they resolve that? Well, I can guess that he tested her and said, did the angel give you a name? Mm -hmm. Jesus, that would put me back on my heels. End of discussion. Mm -hmm. But you notice he was a person of action, self-effacing love, 
manly strength. People think uh, being manly is this cartoon image like machismo mm -hmm. and men are right. monsters mm -hmm. and uh, masculine toxicity. And I, I consider I guess toxic because I, I have a deep voice like my mm -hmm. dad. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm apparently some kind of a monster. But the point is this: he he may have had a deep voice. Or he was a man of action, and when the angel told him in a dream, that was it. Right. Take the, and then, then you go to uh, take the child and the mother because they're designed to destroy the child. Then it goes to Egypt. It gives direct specifics. Go yes. to Egypt. And they did have an ancient Jewish community there in Alexandria. So they go to Egypt. And then what happens years later? Okay, those who had designs to kill the child are dead. Go back to your homeland. Now, we, the tradition is seven years. We don't know that for sure, mm -hmm. but it's tradition. Right. right. And it makes sense because, well, actually, um, Herod. Jesus was really born probably 4 B.C., which sounds a little strange, but they miscounted backwards. The point is this. Herod died, and uh, they're probably about seven years past after his, his uh, confrontation. Mm -hmm. and, and you think about the holy innocence. Here's Joseph. He's protecting this child every step of the way with anxiety mm. because he didn't know the next step. I always think of like Mother God. They have a script. Okay, it's your turn, Mary. And you know, right. as a kid, mm -hmm. it's not like that. They yeah. live with a lot of doubts. What's yeah. the best thing to do? The, my my wife. I can't get. A, I can't even get a Motel Six for heaven's sake. Yeah. I got to right. go in a stable mm -hmm. for the Mother of God and her son. Mm -hmm. So he is. A very practical man in this day and age, where we need manly men, right. mm -hmm. men of faith who listen to the uh, the Lord. Yes. She and the mother guy had one thing solid. She he listened to the word of God and kept it. Yeah. So we have a, a portion of the robe. Mm -hmm. and we think of that as a protector. Mm -hmm. You know, a robe is symbolic of a protection of the body. He was like the robe, if you will, protecting under his mantle the holy mother of God and so her a robe divine fragment, son. A mm -hmm. fragment from that robe. Yes. As far as we know, no. We haven't discovered the body of Joseph. No, so we, no, we haven't. This, this fragment. And yeah. yes, and we have Saint Paul. It's a flange of, from his hand. I don't know which which hand. Doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's this, a large piece. Yes, I mean, it's a I, very large piece. It is. It's very moving to it's, see. It's hard to even imagine how this could survive, but it did. We've got uh, the documents for that. Also, uh, I might, might add, we have the entire right index finger from the right hand of Saint Joseph of Arimathea. Mm -hmm. Wow. Isn't that amazing? I mean, that's amazing. And this leads me to the shroud, but he was the man that purchased the shroud, mm -hmm. wrapped the dead Christ in the shroud with Nicodemus, mm -hmm. and took him down the cross, obviously, brought him to the tomb, laid him in the tomb, and that structure is part of what came in contact with the dead Christ. Mm -hmm. now, I'll give you a little bonus. I almost brought it, but I didn't have a way to bring it. This part of the uh, pinky finger yeah. from uh, the knuckle mid part, now, this is a, an important figure, so it gets smaller, but this part, if you're looking down, knuckle about mid finger, at the pinky finger of the from the right hand of Saint Thomas the Apostle. Mm. Now we think, well, put your fingers where in the wounds in my hands. But he said, put your hand into my side. Right. You know, look at, at it went in. That's a heck of a lance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he forced. So part of the structure mm -hmm. that went into the side of the risen Jesus Christ mm -hmm. is right there. Wow. So we have passion, death, with Nicodemus, and uh, of course Joseph Arimathea. I do have Nicodemus too, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's a bone relic about that big. Mm -hmm. But you can see localized the passion, death, and resurrection isolated in Nicodemus and that right finger of Joseph Arimathea, and then finally this very small part of we call it pinky finger of Saint Thomas, passion, death, and then witness to the resurrection. And in the East, we don't call him a doubting Thomas. We call him the believing Thomas. Amen. Blessed are you. You know, you have, you've seen, but you believe. But blessed are those who have not seen mm -hmm. and believe. So we call him the believing Thomas. Amazing. And uh, do you want to begin? We just have about a minute and a half. We're going to take a break and come back. But sure. say something about the Holy Shroud of Turin and how you acquired this thread from, from it. It's a, it's a thread. It's one millimeter thick by five millimeters wide, mm -hmm. very small. But it was harvested in 1804 for Pope uh, uh, Pius VII, uh, who his, was on his way uh, to uh, Notre Dame to crown uh, Napoleon. Mm -hmm. yeah. And on his way, he went through Turin. If you look at the peninsula, it makes sense. And he had it spread out. You're not going to say no to the Pope. They had a private showing. Mm -hmm. And he knelt before that linen and he asked to have several threads cut and sent back to Rome. Mm -hmm. This is part 
of the threads that the Pope sent back to Rome. And the document I have for it is 1806, so it's two years after mm -hmm. the crown of Napoleon. Beautiful. Father, we're going to take a break at this point, but we're holding <laughs> you over for the final segment of Speaking with Father Joseph Marquis. Amazing collection, over 240 relics uh, in his All Saints Shrine. You can go to allsaintsshrine.com or, or .org. You win. Either, either, either one. Win. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and we're having a wonderful conversation with Father McKee about all these beautiful relics that he brought to us today. And my spirit, my soul, is being so enriched and blessed, and I hope yours is also. Father, can you share with us further maybe one or two saints that aren't here with us in their relics that you have in your collection? Well, once again, uh, these go back to apostolic times. Many of them, we have a relic of uh, St. Bartholomew, Frightening way to die, flayed alive. Mm -hmm. Never denied the resurrection. Isn't that interesting? I mean, how do you lie like that? And, and, and also St. Andrew, the brother of Peter, of course, famous for the famous St. Andrew yeah. Cross. I even have a fragment of the true cross of Andrew, which blew me away the first time I came in contact yes. with that. And since we're focusing on the men in this first section of the two-part series, uh, I wanted to mention that we do have St. Joachim, that's Grandpa, to our Lord. That's incredible. The spouse of uh, St. Anne. And that was acquired from Mistra. Now you probably say, what's Mistra? You'll recognize it in the Passion of the Christ. That's where they filmed it. It's the third longest continuous history yeah. in the history of humanity on mm -hmm. the planet. So there's just a lot. It's um, the, the saints, ever since they've come into my life in a, in a concrete way, by virtue of the remnants, part of the structure when they walked the earth, uh, my prayer life has skyrocketed. And I think, as you mentioned, you do feel the presence. I've had people coming in, they feel the presence of the Blessed Sacrament in the, in the tabernacle, but they also feel, you say, I feel like I'm being surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Mm -hmm. That's exactly yeah. what they do. They evoke uh, the sense of the eternal, also the immediacy, and the love of our, our loved ones, our brothers and sisters. On uh, Monday of this week, a few days ago, yeah. we were celebrating the Feast of All Saints in the West. We celebrate the uh, Sunday after Pentecost, but because with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the sanctification of the human race was made possible on Pentecost. Yeah. But I know in, in the Roman calendar, it's November 1st. And that, we have to remember that this is including a lot of your loved ones and mine. We didn't know them. Maybe they're our ancestors we never met, but they were praying for us and they were cheering yeah. us on and they're still cheering us on. Mm -hmm. And when the saints are encountered in this really concrete way in our church, yeah. I really feel they're there. Yes, we feel that. They right haven't. Now. It's like when you go to a grave of a loved one, they're mm -hmm. there and you can talk to them. Yes. And share your concerns and your prayers are heard. My yeah. father told me before he died, I'm not going to lay down and play dead. He had cancer. Mm -hmm. But I know I'm going to leave shortly. When I'm gone, I hope you don't take your prayers as some canonized saint you never met. You know, I pray, pray to your dad. Right. And I'll take your petitions to our Heavenly Father, to his throne in glory, <laughs> and tell your petitions are heard. And he says, You know, your father's never lied to you, which is really true. He's a rotten liar, never had enough practice, you know. And he, he was good. When I was in the hospitals, he was great at happy deaths. I actually had two, a couple, married, very devoted like you, for years yeah. and years and years. They died in separate hospitals within an hour of each other. Yeah. Mm, that's Beautiful. a happy death. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So I had the funeral and both caskets were in front. They were doing everything in the parish. Mm. Now, Richard, the man's name was Richard, uh, he wasn't in the ladies' Sedali, but everything else. Yeah. They, they, did Father, together. We, they did together. We have just Couldn't a, pass the physical. We have about 30 <laughs> seconds or so. Close us with a blessing, if you would. During this year of St. Joseph, I'll be honored to, through the intercession of St. Joseph, the guardian, protect of the Holy Family. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, descend upon you and all those who are watching in faith. Amen. 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 We look forward to continuing the conversation tomorrow. We hope that you've been encouraged. Uh, in a sense, being in the presence of, of the saints, of these saints here today, of all saints, those that are coming to us tomorrow. 
You're an important part of this EWTN family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and with Joy. Bye now.